Hi there, I'm Jason Haynes and welcome to the Reinhardt Coaches Show. On our first episode, we'll be talking with the head coach of football at Reinhardt, Dr. Danny Kronick. We'll look back at 2013 and take a look forward to 2014. That's all coming up right after this on the Reinhardt Coaches Show. At Jersey Mike's, we think no sub should be measured in inches long or seconds till serve. A sub should be measured in moments, time with friends, lunch breaks unbroken. Every sub is a chance to be great. Every sub should ask the question, am I a sub or am I a sub above? Jersey Mike's, be a sub above. Ed Voyle's Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is a proud corporate partner of Reinhardt Football. Visit them online at www.edvoileschryslerjeep.net or visit their dealership at 789 South Cobb Parkway in Marietta. Welcome back to the Reinhardt Coaches Show. It's my pleasure now to introduce to you and be joined by the head coach of the Reinhardt University football program, Dr. Danny Kronick. Coach, thanks for coming out and joining us today. Good to be with you, Jason. You know, this was a first year program last year. It's been in existence now for a couple of years, but you were the first head coach of this program. You had a rather storied career as a head coach in the high school ranks. What drew you to come to Reinhardt to be the first head coach of this program? Well, in 1971, I lived in Wallaska with Mr. Jack Smith, who was the mayor of Wallaska, and Reinhardt was a junior college at that time. And I think we just had the roots were deep here, and that this has been a dream come true. This is always what I've been wanting to do. How much of a pull was it to be able to come to a first year college program instead of just taking over perhaps an established program? Well, it's my first time to just to start a program, but there is a lot to do and we had to draw on a lot of years of experience to kind of figure out some of the things we're doing as much as equipment. I think the main thing we thought about when coming was our knowledge of the uh, football coaches of the state of Georgia. And I think if we have an advantage anywhere is the fact that we've got Georgia boys playing on this team and Georgia high school football is kind of flourishing us as, as we're going along. I, I think that was the major draw. You know, that first year that you were on campus with players, your team didn't actually play any games. It was a lot of scrimmages, especially during the spring. What did you learn about the team, about your coaching staff, and about your players during that first year without actually getting to play any games? Well, I am delighted that we did not play any games that first year. Uh, you know, if uh, when somebody made the mention that, that football is basically quality instruction and quality enforcement. And I think that let us slow down and deal with things that way. Now, part of it was recruiting 147 players to come on campus for us. And uh, that number diminished very quickly once things kind of got started, not because we wanted it to diminish, just because of the nature and the fact that we were competing. And when kids see they may be running seventh or eighth team, the competition, they tend to, tend to not want to stay with that. So I, I was pleased with what happened that first year. Uh, we didn't really get in the facility where we're actually shooting. This is our weight room, and that didn't happen to mid-October. So we only practiced about five weeks that first year but we did a lot of conditioning. Uh, we had to learn a lot of different things just about being away from home and getting in college life and then acquiring the staff. Uh, all that gave us some time that we really needed to, to be able to accomplish what we did last year. You know, you mentioned this weight room where we're uh, taping and you occasionally see we have some uh, little bit of added incentive of having some uh, student athletes walking back behind us. But uh, once you got into this building, I know that really helped you guys not just from the weightlifting aspect, but having a locker room here, having a place to be able to house all your coaches, have basically a home for your program. Well, the, the field house is very much what we needed. Football is not a sport that you can go play yourself into. You have to do something else to get to where you can play football. And it begins in the weight room and working on fitness. And uh, of course, to be able to get them to do that, you need a dressing room, a locker room, a trainer, uh, or an equipment room, you need coaches office and what 
kind of gets away from folks a little bit is how important the video is. Uh, we're running hurry up offense and I got to thinking the other day the reason everybody's going that hurry up is because you, you can't coach hurry up during practice. You got to do it on the video after practice sometime. And all that has to do with technology and how all that's kind of coming to be at this time. You know, once you finally got through that first practice season, we'll call it, then you come up, you get students coming back in in August of 2013 is when they finally arrive on campus. First preseason poll comes out and in the Mid-South Conference where you guys play in the Western Division, you guys are picked to finish last. Uh, talk about expectations at that point as you're building a new program. I'm sure that in a lot of ways it was pretty fair honestly to pick you guys last because you hadn't proven anything at that point. Well I, I guess that I've learned my lessons. Coach Dooley was one of my coaches way back there and I've learned how to pull mouth a little bit. But I think you need to. I think probably sometimes setting expectations too high really create a problem when you can't reach them. And that may be us this year because we had a good year last year. But I do think we slipped up on a few people, and the fact that we were playing freshmen and redshirt freshmen against juniors and seniors was some of that. But we had an advantage. We got these Georgia high school kids that are coming to us. So I think that's an advantage. You had your first game ever uh, in program history. Your first game as a collegiate head coach uh, down at Mercer last season on a Saturday night down in Macon. Uh, it was a tremendous atmosphere, 12,000 people in the stadium down there. First game for either program was that game. And uh, really, your team played its heart out. Uh, it was a magical night, except probably for the final score. You guys ended up falling 40 to 37, but you proved that you weren't going to be pushed around. Well, that was an exciting night, and it was the hottest night I've ever had. It, boy, it was at 6 o'clock, and the sun coming across there beating on us. I actually... Uh, I got uh, a sunburn at <laughs> 6 o'clock at night coming off that surf. It was very hot, but it was very exciting. Uh, I noticed that beautiful facility is named after uh, uh, Judge uh, Homer Drake, who actually was a Sunday school teacher of mine. And uh, that facility is beautiful. They have a great situation going there and making. It is a big deal for us to go down there and play Mercer. As that game progressed and we were kind of coming back there at the end, we were struggling inside the 10. We had not implemented a good goal line offense. And, and we kind of got shut down inside the 10 and missed a field goal or two. And then as it got down to about 30 seconds, we lost communications on our headsets. So we didn't punt when it was probably fourth and eight and they got the ball and got down there with about five seconds left, they kicked a field goal. But we we fixed those communication problems and. Hopefully we can get in that situation again, we will make it this time. Well, your team really proved to be almost a fourth quarter team, especially in the next game against Lindsey Wilson. It was the home opener, the first football game ever played here at uh, Ken White Field, which you can see behind us. Uh, it was a game that your team got behind early, but came back and really made a game. You ended up falling uh, against a very tough Lindsey Wilson team, but again, another example that you weren't going to be pushed around and really at the end of that game when you looked at Lindsey Wilson they were really happy that game ended when it did. Well if we had been able to stop them just one time at the end and we might have gotten but what we found out was this hurry up has a significant advantage in the fourth quarter. The defenses get very tired at that time so that was the first acknowledgement that I had that this and Drew had talked me into this hurry up that, that that was going to be a, uh, a factor. So we're working on that hurry up. Your next game, you had your first real overnight road trip up mm -hmm. at Kentucky Christian. You're staying basically on the border between uh, Kentucky and Ohio, uh, driving 40 mm -hmm. miles back to go play at Kentucky Christian. And uh, it was a real slobber knocker to coin the old term. Uh, 19 to 14 though, your team won the first game in program history. And it seemed like you finally figured out your whole team came together and figured out this is where we're going to do to win a game and you guys went and did it. Well we were very proud of our kids in that ball game because they were a good team. Kentucky Christian was good. They had about three defensive backs that were excellent and it was it was a slugfest up there and uh, we were delighted to win that game and we also kind of found about being on road that far, I was eight hours on the bus, we got closer together. We, we were able to focus and I was delighted with the team. That was good. 
We're going to go ahead and take a break. We'll come back with Coach Chronic. We'll talk more about the 2013 season, and we'll look ahead to 2014. That's right after this on the Reinhardt Coaches Show. At Jersey Mike's, we think no sub should be measured in inches long or seconds till serve. A sub should be measured in moments, time with friends, lunch breaks unbroken. Every sub is a chance to be great. Every sub should ask the question, am I a sub or am I a sub above? Jersey Mike's, be a sub above. For more information on Reinhardt Athletics, visit the website at ReinhardtEagles.com. Welcome back to the Reinhardt Coaches Show as we visit more with Dr. Danny Kronick, the head coach of the Reinhardt Football Eagles. Now, Coach Kronick, last year your team was 1-2 and two going into a game down at Faulkner, and all of a sudden, <laughs> Faulkner's really become your biggest rival in a lot of ways. That was a game you were down 24 to 14 in a driving rainstorm down in Montgomery, and your team comes back, scores 14 points in the fourth quarter, wins that game 28 to 24, and really got off to a good first step in the Mid-South Conference West Division. Yes, it was. It was very exciting. I have to admit this. I did not expect to win that ball game. So that was a tremendous surprise, and as we take the field, uh, Faulkner has got some tremendous football players. They've got a, a, a lot of students. They're more than twice as big as we are. And they recruit a lot of kids out of California and Florida, and they were good. They were good. In fact, they beat us up for a while, but maybe we did a little rope-a-dope so we could come back at the end. That's the way I kind of see that game just a little bit. You had a couple big plays in that game. Uh, Nigel Curtis, I remember, mm -hmm. had a big run right at the start of the fourth quarter that really provided you guys a big lift. And then Tevin McCoy on defense that game, he had five and a half sacks in that game. He was all over the place defensively. It was not just those two guys, though. It was a full team effort. Oh, it was good. I, well, we also... Uh, uh, Brought in our, our quarterback that hadn't started. We'd started Jonathan uh, Shambly that that ball game, and then brought in Ryan Thompson, and uh, L.J. Stegall showed out a little bit uh, down the sideline a time or two. That was an exciting ball game. It really was. So now you're two and two on the season. After a lot of people were thinking maybe you'd only win two games all year, all of a sudden you've got six games to go, and you're at two and two on the year, and really that win ends up catapulting you guys for the rest of the year. You come in, the next game was at home against Bethel, and Bethel was a team that had been ranked the year before and had a lot of high expectations mm -hmm. on themselves. But instead, you end up coming out, and you come out of the gates like with hair on fire, basically, and you build up a big lead and then hold on and win 41-36. Well, that's true. When you pull the plug on it, it got away from us. But now Bethel uh, had had some injuries, and as they adjusted to what we were doing, they gave us a hard time there at the end. But we felt good about our performance. Then the next week against Union was probably the game which your team maybe showed the most character all season. Uh, you were down to your third string quarterback in Dylan Haynes because of uh, some injuries with your other two quarterbacks. But you end up coming out and on Union's homecoming. You get a 21 to 18 win over the Bulldogs. Well, that was tough. Uh, Union really had prepared for us. Homecoming, they were, they, they were backed up in the corner and they come out, came out fighting. Uh, we had some, we weren't able to exact, do all the exact things we wanted to do, but I thought Dylan Haynes did a real good job at quarterback. That was a big character game. I think you used the right term there. You go into a bye week finally with a record of four and two. How were you looking to manage expectations for the rest of the year? Because you had some big games still coming up. Was it a lot of let's use the bye week to rest up and get ready for the next game with Bellhaven and try not to look too far ahead. How were you trying to keep your guys focused going forward? Well, it had been a kind of a, a splash to go with. And I, we kind of caught our breath a little bit, tried to get some other folks that were kind of ready to play, let a few of them rest. Uh, the bye week, sometimes you can beat them up, but we didn't do that this time. We kind of let them get healed up, ready to go. Then against Bellhaven coming here, uh, it was homecoming for Reinhardt, the first homecoming that uh, Reinhardt's ever had during the fall. And uh, your team came out ready to play more than ever, 49 to 17, a big win in that one. Your defense really showed out, but your offense put up 49 points as well. Well, it did. And 
and they had had uh, they had lost one of their coaches, had passed away with a heart attack, and uh, they had had some adversity coming up here that week. But our kids were were together and ready to go. I was really proud of their performance. Then you have probably the biggest game of the year against the University of the Cumberlands. They were yeah. the number two team in the country at that point, and your team had gained so much respect that you were actually ranked 19th in the country going into that game. It's a game no one expected to happen in the way that it did no. uh, as far as rankings go. And then on top of that, your team comes out and builds up the big league going into the fourth quarter, but then it's like Cumberlands flipped the switch and they were ready to go in the fourth quarter. Well, I think we have to kind of, if, if we have looked at our videos from last year over and over, other than Mercer, uh, and, and I, don't, I don't know how to put this this way, and as, as uh, Faulkner too, but Cumberland was probably the best team we played last year. Uh, and they had shown it several ways, and they went on and played for the national championship. And they showed tremendous character in that fourth quarter in coming back. And we, we, didn't match up quite at that time. So hopefully we learned something for the future to do it. But I was proud of our performance. We played exceptional for three quarters. But the fourth quarter, they kind of they kind of began to dominate and, and, and did a great job. You had a off week after that, and then you had a bit of a letdown against Cumberland University. But in the season finale, it was a conference division game against Campbellsville. You knew if you won that game that you would end up winning the Mid-South Conference West Division. And you go up to Campbellsville and you win at 66 to 48. Your offense just explodes. And I guess maybe it was a good thing the offense had the explosion it did because the defense was a little bit on the ropes. But the offense really came to play. Well, I, I, I am excited about that part. We had almost 800 yards offense. And if folks watched uh, Auburn play in the SEC championship and how dominant they were, they had 600. We had 800 yards that game. So that was, and, I, and, and in all honesty, uh, Campbellsville was a good football team. But let me back up to that previous week when we lost against uh, Cumberland, Tennessee. We had six turnovers in that. We ran the ball 10 plays in the first half and were down, I think it was 21 to 14. We scored 21 points in about 10 plays. So we, had, we just turning that ball over. When we turn it over, we're going to be in trouble. So we really worked hard on trying to remedy some of those problems. You finished the season six and four. You beat everyone's expectations, maybe even a few of your own expectations. You end up winning the Mid-South Conference West Division, have a winning record your first year. What did that mean to you personally to have that kind of year in your first year? You know, in putting it all together, uh, as, as, as we do put it all together, uh, the staff, it is a staff. The, the main thing is I told Dr. Isherwood when we agreed to come here, if we get good coaches, we'll find some good players and the good players then will produce. It's really about the players, but I think having a good coaching staff was the fundamental basis of what we came in. Not Danny Chronic, but being able to find some good coaches and they did an outstanding job last year. And it was very gratifying to, to have that. One of the most gratifying experiences I've ever had. Very special. So that's a look back at 2013. Coming up in our next segment, we'll take a look at 2014 and what's ahead for the Eagles. That's right after this, you're watching the Reinhardt Coaches Show. At Jersey Mike's, we think no sub should be measured in inches long or seconds till serve. A sub should be measured in moments, time with friends, lunch breaks unbroken. Every sub is a chance to be great. Every sub should ask the question, am I a sub or am I a sub above? Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Jersey Mike Subs is proud to be a corporate sponsor of Reinhardt Athletics. Visit their location at 149 Reinhardt College Parkway in Canton, Georgia. Welcome back to the Reinhardt Coaches Show. Joined by the head coach of the football program here at Reinhardt, Dr. Danny Chronic. And coach, after the excitement of 2013, 2014, You've got all of a sudden got a lot of expectations on you. you. Had no expectations in 2013 from your peers. Now in 2014, you and Faulkner have both been picked to win the Mid South Conference West Division. That's the good news and the bad news. Uh, sometimes those expectations can weight you down a little bit. And uh, in all honesty, I think we slipped up on some folks last year. Played with a lot of youthful enthusiasm, 
kind of caught them off guard a little bit and won some games at the end that could have gone either way. We could have lost three more games very easily. We could have won two more games pretty easily. But it was close. It was that way all year long. It was a very exciting and special season. To duplicate that may take a better effort. You know, your team runs a wing tee, which is what you ran back in high school days. It's not exactly prevalent in college, but it's very effective in college. But to be effective, you need good running backs. And you've got a good running back in L.J. Stegall, but it's not just L.J. You've got a whole core of running backs that really do perform well for you on a week-in, week-out basis. Well, L.J., we didn't know what we had in L.J. until we started actually playing. And he, he returned a kickoff against uh, Mercer right off the bat. Uh, LJ has some ex exceptional speed and quickness and good judgment about where to get into certain places and he was named the conference uh, offensive player of the year last year which uh, as a freshman he, he did that as a freshman player of the year uh, he is exciting and we've got we've got some uh, so we got some others that are going to be good and Sam Jones is a great running back and, and Nigel Curtis did some very special things last year uh, our quarterbacks, I thought Ryan Thompson and uh, Jonathan Shambly played real well, and Dylan came in, and those are all important things to us. And we play with a tight end. We had all conference tight end, but we may have had only got tight end in the conference and C.J. Johnson. But we got some more coming in there. Nate Holton has been playing real well, and he's a, he's a transfer from uh, Georgia military. So we'll mention some of those guys as, as we go along right now. One guy last year that was really amazing to me was uh, Clark. He came in and had, did a great job at the wing back and got better as he went along. Nathan Lingo, we've been excited about him for two years. He may actually get in a game this year. <laughs> He's been hurt and other things going on. A split in, I do not know how he plays. Aaron Kennedy is not a big bulky guy, but he is a great receiver. Tyler Bradley. Has had a, he's had a good fall this time, and we got some others coming in. Freshmen, I'm going to hold the names to see if they show up on game night. Uh, they have done well. Uh, P.J. Green hopefully is going to the, get in the ball game this year. And uh, our offensive line, that is the key in the wing tee, and there's a lot of running and hitting folks on the run in the wing tee. And keeping those guys healthy is going to be a key factor. We're going to have a couple of freshmen that might get in there. We got George Hitchu and Sherrod Pittman and Sherrod Mitchell and Clay Swint and Joe Cannon. Uh, I'm hoping they can do what they did last year. Now, in the wing tee and the way you guys designate it uh, in your nomenclature, so to speak, with your uh, with your offense, it's not traditional running back, fullback. Uh, as far as that goes, you go with the more the A back, the B back, kind of like you see uh, like at Georgia Tech, something like that, where with Paul Johnson, what he uses. That, theirs is an option game. Ours is a little bit more misdirection and uh, play action pass than what that is. And it's, it, it is from the days of, uh, of high school, but if you really want to go back, it goes way back to the single wing. And we've made modifications, and the hurry up. I don't always know. I have to ask, what was that sometimes rather than <laughs> what is it going to be? But it's exciting. It's exciting. We throw the ball a good bit. We are primarily run, but I think we, we're adaptive to, to the players that are there and what the defense has given us. I know this is a – some folks might be wondering, the people coming behind us, you got kids showing up here for your team meetings and uh, getting ready for practice here this afternoon. This is a really a busy time for you guys as you get ready for 2014. You've always got something going on in this building, it seems like, with your student athletes. Well, you've got treatment. That's one of the things we've got to keep them well. And they've got weightlifting, and then they've got to watch the video, and then, of course they've got practice. And they have coaches' meetings with them too. So, yeah, it's busy. It's busy. We're not even schooled yet. Uh, people always want to talk about quarterbacks, but uh, what you're expecting from them. Last year, uh, Jonathan Chambly was your starting quarterback. He got kind of dinged up. Ryan Thompson came in. Uh, he did fairly well. Dylan Haynes ended up getting a start as well. You've got three guys with some good experience at quarterback. Who do you see right now that's leading the race to be the starting quarterback on day one? Well, it's hard to call it totally. We're going to kind of, kind of hold that to the last one, but Ryan has had some good practices. Jonathan did some good things yesterday, too. Looking ahead at your schedule this year, I want to talk about your coaches in a minute, but I want to talk about your schedule now because your schedule, you've got all the same opponents this year, but with the exception of the Mercer game, you're going to be flipping where you play folks. So 
the Mercer game still stays down in Macon, but now instead of playing Lindsey Wilson here, you'll end up playing Lindsey Wilson up in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Instead of playing Faulkner down in Montgomery, you'll be playing Faulkner up here in Moleska. What's that like dealing with that schedule? Because this year you've got six row games as opposed to having a balanced five and five schedule. Well, that's because we agreed to go back down to Mercer. And Mercer is a beautiful facility. And it, it lets us also help our recruiting down toward the middle part of the state. We played extremely well on the road last year. I think when we get them out of class and they got to sit on that bus, they can rest and sleep. I think they're more focused on the road than they are at home. At least that's been our experience. And, and we, we know what they're eating. We know when they're going to bed. They don't have other distractions. Somehow that's been, and Ronnie Smith has been kind of helping us to manage that and done, done a super job with that. Your defense is going to have a little bit of a different look this year as you're going to a three-man front. Uh, but Adam Carter is going to be your defensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. And you've got a lot of guys on your coaching staff who have a lot of experience both at the college ranks and at the NFL ranks. Well, that's true. And if we, well, Adam has, is a bright young coach. He was a head coach at Bradwell Institute. Before that, he was a defensive coordinator at Camden. And you know Camden's been winning some state championships. Prior to that, he uh, had been uh, the secondary coach at South Carolina State. He had worked some as a GA at uh, West Georgia, where he played. He's from Paulden County. And he's a bright young man. He's sharp. We, we did a good job getting at him. Adam's primarily a secondary coach in his, in his nature. And he has an intern helping him, which is uh, Titus Brown. Uh, the linebacker coach is Tommy Scott. Tommy is exceptional, has been a, played at Georgia, uh, has been a head coach in the state. We're delighted him, and of course we've got Quentin Moses that played at Georgia and is professional. Well, Coach, I know you've got a lot of experience on the coaching staff. You've got a lot of coaches who are going to really be helping you out, but ultimately you're the man in charge, and we look forward to seeing you and your team out there on the field this We're year. We're excited about being there. Well, Coach, thanks for your time today. 2013 was a great year, and 2014, I'm sure, is going to be an even better one. That's all the time that we have today on the Reinhardt Coaches Show. Join us next time as we look ahead to the fall sports here at Reinhardt. That's next time on the Reinhardt Coaches Show.